Hi, Steve. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. I always enjoy doing podcasts with you. Same here, Teresa. It's a lot of fun and we get to teach people something. Yes. And that's why we're here. So before we dive in, how about you briefly describe what Southwire does for everybody? Southwire is North America's largest wire and cable manufacturer. Um, we make everything from the wire that goes into your house to overhead transmission lines and everything in between. And uh, here today, we are talking about our factory automation cables, specifically a variable frequency drive cable, which, which runs from a VFD's output to a motor. So you're the right person to be talking about this topic today. So tell me why people want to use wire in pipe. That is really a good question. And um, we get that question a lot. Um, basically, a VFD cable is, you know, a, a whole three conductor, three power phase cable um, with integrated grounds and a shield. And people want to know why they can't just take a, a, a bunch of individual conductors, uh, place them in conduit, let's say EMT conduit, and they're saying, well, it seems to me like I got a poor man's VFD cable because I got the conductors in there and I, they, the uh, conduit's acting as a shield. So what's, what's the disadvantage of that? They like doing that because it's cheap. It's uh, very easy to install. There's no installation problems there. And they do this for all kinds of other applications. So it just makes sense. They're very comfortable with it. Why shouldn't I do this on uh, on my VFD system. What other kind of applications do they do that for? Well, they do it for basically anything. You can run conduit to uh, run to your light switches or to your outlets or to other motors off traditional power systems. Um, really, any place you're, you're running power, it's nice to put it in conduit because it protects the cable. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's very simple to pull single conductors in, into that. Mm -hmm. So what kind of wire are people using in wire and pipe installations? Well, they're typically single conductor cables, um, which we don't have a little VFD cable, right? A VFD cable is three conductors. Now, you you could put that cable into pipe, but it's, it's much harder to pull in. And um, single wires are typically using um, probably most often THHN wire. Um, sometimes they'll use... Uh, cable types RHH, RHW, or XHHW. Um, but those are those are primarily the three, we call them building wire uh, cables that are used in, in these kind of applications. They're readily available and they're reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. Now I kind of see what's coming, but tell us what are the drawbacks to using wire in pipe and what kind of issues it causes? Ah, uh, good question. That's exactly why I'm here is to talk <laughs> about that. Um, there are several. One is, uh, let, let's start out with if you're using THHN, well, drive manufacturers and cable manufacturers all agree that is not the cable type that you want to use in the drive application because the voltages that the drive puts out are higher than the rated voltage of that 600 volt cable. And it's been shown that its insulation doesn't always hold up. Uh, plus, it's a more fragile insulation, being a, a thermal plastic, which can, can melt. Or when you pull it around a bend in conduit, you can thin the wall. In smaller size THHNs, you've only got a 15 mil wall thickness. So, you know, it doesn't take much to damage that. And we have seen that cable feel, uh, fail in, in the field. Now, if you use a thermal set insulation like XHHW or RHHW, you're in a much better place with, uh, with the insulation uh, than with THHN. But there's other things that, that you need to, um, to worry about. One of those would be um, the, the conduit itself as an electrical shield. Um, conduit, um, whether if, if you're using something like EMT or well, any conduit, it's not designed to be an electrical shield. Conduit is designed to be mechanical protection. And therefore it's installed as mechanical protection. And even more importantly, it's maintained as mechanical protection. Well, over time you can get corrosion in the joints of that conduit. You can have it 
it's not maintained from an electrical perspective. So as long as it's protecting the cable, that's really all uh, maintenance people care about for that. So you can lose the, the effectiveness of, of that piece of conduit as a shield, right? Whereas in a electrical cable, um, that electrical shield is designed for one purpose and one pur purpose only to shield the interconductors and, and the rest of the world from harmful EMI. That doesn't always happen with conduit. Another thing regarding conduit is that it uh, typically doesn't have a jacket. It's just bare metal on the outside. Whereas a VFD cable or really any shielded cable for that matter will have a jacket. Um, now, besides um, looking more attractive, um, I guess that's one benefit of it. But the big advantage of that jacket is it's an insulator. And so where that uh, cable comes in contact with building infrastructure, it's insulated. It's not going to allow the currents to jump off onto that building infrastructure. And that's been shown to happen a lot because this is high frequency stuff we're talking about. And it likes to find big surface areas to roam on. So building steel, even though it's not copper or aluminum, it's a, it looks like a really good conductor to high frequency signals. Um, now conduit, obviously it's, it's exposed metal. So where that comes in contact with um, your building infrastructure, that's a great place for that current to jump off. And now you no longer control the path of that current. Um, you know, if you think about it, conduit is typically hung with, with metal hangers or straps that just, they're just begging that current to come come my way. So uh, so we can cause havoc in, in other parts of the factory. Wow, that's a lot. And you keep mentioning the VFD cable. So tell me what a better solution is and why, what the difference is. Well, you might be able to guess, I'm probably going to say the <laughs> cable is, is the better solution, but it really is in this case for the, for the following reasons. One is if you buy VFD cable from a reputable manufacturer, you're not going to get THHN conductors. So you're not going to have to worry about that conductor getting damaged or shorting out because of uh, seeing too high of voltages. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Secondly is the, uh, VFD cable shield, as I've kind of already mentioned with regards to conduit, it's designed to handle those electrical frequencies. It has a very low transfer of impedance across the cable from one end to the other at high frequency, which is exactly what you want. And most importantly, it is, uh, it, it, it's covered. So there's no place for that current uh, to go. Now there's various constructions of VFD cables. Um, we make uh, basically the three most common that are out there. We make copper tape shielded products, which are great for industrial applications. It's a copper tape that's wrapped over uh, the cabled core before we jack it. And then we do copper braid constructions, which are much more flexible and they even have finely stranded conductors. So they're much easier to bend. OEMs really like those a lot. But if you're really a wire and pipe fan, the thing to consider would be our Armorex cable, which is a uh, continuously corrugated welded aluminum. So it's a continuous tube of aluminum that's corrugated so that it's easier to work with. And then we have our three conductors and three grounds inside that cable. Now, a lot of installers don't like uh, that, that construction. We, we call ours Armorex. It's continuously corrugated welded aluminum. It's, it's also the only cable that's that's uh, approved for class one div one applications in, in, in uh, hazardous environments. But from talking to electricians that worked with that cable, the main reasons electricians and, and even engineers don't like to spec it or install it sometimes is because their installers haven't worked with it. They're not familiar with it. It is a little different but it probably doesn't take any longer to install that than it would a wire and pipe installation. And you get the full benefits of a, VF, a, a jacketed VFD cable, which you, you obviously don't get with wire and pipe. So those are the three main cable types and you can choose any of them and they're all gonna be a huge upgrade over just sticking some individual conductors in conduit. Mm -hmm. Well, I know there's a lot more to learn. So where can people who are wire and pipe fans get more information? 
I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I am working on an application note that we will have on our website and we will have at Automation Fair this year in our booth. So if you want to learn more about this subject or any of the other nuanced things that can go crazy with BFD applications, come on over to the Southwire booth or um, contact us on our website. And we'll be glad to get you some more information. Okay. And for our listeners who don't know, Automation Fair is the premier automation industrial automation show for our industry. And it's the week of November 6th in Boston. So you can go see Southwire and a lot more top companies in our industry. So thank you very much, Steve, for talking with me. It's always great to have you on this podcast and help educate the industry. Thank you, Teresa. And thank you to our listeners and YouTube viewers for joining us. I'm Teresa Hauk, and we'll talk to you soon.